Oops. <laughs> All right, let's turn that off. All right, hope you get signal. Let me just do, yeah, okay. Hi, welcome to my, <laughs> this is the big one, of course. This is number 500. Um, episode 500, The Masculinization of Women, which is the perfect title for my 500th broadcast. Before I get to that, thanks for joining me. Here's my, let me tell you about me, then we'll cover the topic. Um, sorry, my mind's a bit in the middle of stuff because we're just on the last hour of the weekend event that I'm at, which is actually where this topic title came from. I'll tell you that in a second. So my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help strong, successful women find, create, and make time for balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which is why these talks get, get talked about. And these talks called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart started 500 broadcasts ago, which was basically about, at that time, about a year and a half, year three quarters ago. Today's topic is the masculinization, masculinization of women. And that title comes from a friend, Deborah Kagan, whose event I'm at at the moment. I'm going to get back in shortly, so I'm going to do this fairly expediently. This is a Sunday broadcast, even though I'm dressed up because I'm at the event. Um, because I've talked about this before, but I haven't necessarily gone deep enough on it. Because apparently people are still doing it. It's like you think if I talked about it once, everybody on the planet would get it and we'd be done. Not quite that easy. But the topic today, again, is the masculinization of women is really the self masculinization of women because women are doing it themselves partly because it's the way the world has taught them to be and partly because it's the only way women, women have proven themselves in business I'm going to give you a spectrum or, or a um, timeline back in the 50s was about the last time this was going on but back in the 50s was when women were well basically they didn't have independence 90% of the women back then were doing their own thing in sorry they weren't doing their own thing they were living at home men would come up come and court them from their parents house they would stay at home basically under the under the under the roof of their parents until the man would come and court them to um, not date them but get engaged and then take them out of the house and marry them sort of thing if that makes any sense so it wasn't until the late 50s, early 60s, where women started getting their own, I said, well, I said most, I think it was most women, to be honest, Jack. Thank you for the input, by the way, and I see you. I've seen you for a long time. But the thing is, what's happened since that time, when women have been out of the workforce, as it were, after the sexual revolution, especially in the 60s, women basically were forging and fighting their own way to become have level of equality, which is still happening, by the way, in case you had noticed. And, I was gonna say but, but and, so women were learning how to be in the business world but the way the business world was designed is for men. Like, that's a surprise. So women learned to be like men to see the business world. They had to basically embody the traits, the habits, um, the mindset of, um, let's say this again, for women to learn how to be in business was to copy the men. So literally back in the 60s, women started dressing like men because the business world really had men and secretaries in a way in the, business, the corporate world so women had to dress like men to not be the secretary types to compete and again this is the, I should say up front this is my theory <laughs> the feminist theory yes and this is the thing hi Talisa and I see my broadcast this is the thing it was a feminism change but the feminist movement took hold and some people look at feminism as, as a anti-men thing I look at feminism as being what's actually needed now more than ever because women have started to realize that their power is being feminine, not being masculine. Because the thing is, I believe, the sexual revolution in the 60s, what was known as the feminist movement or the um, women's liberation movement in England, it was called. A lot of women were actually, um, let me say this, so out of alignment with their masculine, so much out of alignment with their feminine side because they copied the men, that there was really the masculine movement for women, not the feminist movement. Kind of sort of, if you know what I mean. So, my um, my passion in my work has been helping women own their feminine. And having watched this happen so many times with different women, I'm very clear that this paradigm, this shifting, it's going to take time, to be blunt. And so the masculinization of women, which has been happening, well, happened starting back in the 60s, probably more in the end time, until pretty much now, 
so many women have not yet gotten to the place where they own their feminine because the world has taught them that being feminine is weak weaker than being masculine or being male like so women have been had to play tough to compete with men so so Jack was saying there uh, let me see the comments I'm watching the you've been challenged by some women to give them examples of feminine women who are successful in business to be honest I think the most fe- the most um, successful feminine women are entrepreneurs because women who do their own businesses as, as individuals tend to be more able to if they've gotten the guidance and understanding to carry feminine practices into their work but in the corporate world it is very masculine energy centric it's very directional competitive getting things done making things happen which is a masculine trait and yes women can succeed in that when they're in their masculine heart and the remembrance is this is the key part really when it comes to outside of work how do you switch it back to feminine how do women learn to, to reclaim or to reconnect or to shed the masculine to be back in their feminine when they go home either to take care of themselves or to be with their families or to be with to date men any of that stuff this is the challenge that women, many women have faced is they don't know how to disengage or even, even the fact that they're not in their feminine when they go home they're so trained in that masculine mindset through the culture of the business world when they go home they don't know how to turn it off they come home and like when they go out after a happy hour after work they're hitting on the men like the men are hitting on the women it's a competitive combative energetic it's not a courtship arena anymore <laughs> way different from that now some places it's changing but as a culture we have a big shift to happen and so I believe so, so sort of answering your question Jack about women who's, who are successful in business there are some corporate leaders now women who are VPs and who are at that level of leadership who have been able to bring some of their feminine energy into the corporate world and it's not common no and I don't have examples to give you right off the top of my head unfortunately but there are women who are now leading from a feminine place in the business world because frankly the business world could learn from the feminine and let me put this this um proposition out there is the corporate world has been run by men for so long and we are coming towards the end what I would feel of a challenge of integration a challenge of but it's a crisis really way of corporate world because it's been run by masculine to compete 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 compete, and we're actually destroying everything the challenge with the way we take care of the planet the challenge of how companies are are, are, um, um, sucking up sucking is not a word um are like swallowing up, that's the word, swallowing up other companies. The more uh, more monopolies that happen is because the masculine energy is driving. Compete, 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 versus collaborate. The reality is, if the feminine was running the business world, businesses will learn how to harmonize and cooperate and collaborate much more easily. Some are doing that, but much more easily, so that, so that each business honors the other business. So it's not compete, kill, destroy, take over, swallow up. It's about how do we work together and everybody wins. And yes, exactly, Jack. Yes, women are paying a higher personal energetic price for this masculinization. That's what I'm talking. That's what I'm. That's what my 500 talks have been about. Is helping women own their feminine in my in my work now more and more. It's not just about relationship and attracting men and that sort of stuff. Although that's part of it, is how to embody and own their feminine heart once again. How to reconnect to their femininity. How to be embracing and embodying their feminine everywhere. So yes, at home. Yes, in their personal lives. Yes, in their dating life. Yes, in their social interactions. And yes, in the business world. That's the future, I think, of the planet, to be honest. I believe firmly that it's going to take the feminine energetic, and it's not just women, but the feminine energetic in both women and men, because men can do the feminine too, that's going to change the planet for, or turn the planet away from the, um, <laughs> it's like the planet's rushing towards a cliff there, because that doesn't make sense. But the idea being is that we as a culture are pushing the Earth to a point of crisis in 2030, apparently, according to the art scientists. And I think one of the ways we're going to change that is when we get the feminine energy to guide the planet back to health. Because the feminine is about expansiveness into life, and the masculine energy, to be honest, is about completion, closure, endings, which is death. So, no surprise the planet is heading towards a crisis in 2030, because it's masculine energy driving it. And I believe there's a chance we can change the direction culturally and globally if we put the feminine energy in charge, if we allow the feminine to lead, if we bring the feminine energy into all areas of business, social, societal, governmental as well, because with that energy inclusive, because it is an inclusive and embracing energy, we can actually start hearing ideas from both sides of conversations in business, both sides of conversation in, in society, in politics especially. And with that, we can change directions and we can actually have something that can happen. 
so we're saying Jack I think you're actually on the same page which I like so the, the collaboration mentality and value system is the future because competition through social Darwinism for because com competition through social Darwinism falsehoods I think I, I'm, I'm not getting the, the, the grammar right but yes I agree with this that's, that's my message in a way is that collaboration is the future it's the only thing that's going to save us frankly because every time we compete which is what's happening right now with certain members of, par of parliament of the government and some corporations that are doing it like it's kind of like they're doing it um, we're going to do what we're going to do and damn everybody else that's not feminine that's masculine actually it's macho it's not masculine and it's that challenge I'm watching it happen on a cultural level that we have to change something big time I'm just realizing time wise I'm going to wrap this up shortly but I'm also thinking ahead I know there's going to be some more talks on this. This is, this is a starting point. This is number 500 in my Facebook Lives. There are a lot of these. But I think for the next few, it's going to be a lot about this theme, this topic, and how we can change the planet. Because it's time <laughs> It's time I spoke up. It's time we spoke up about how we can shift the culture, wake people up, and embrace a new way of doing things that is more inclusive, more additive, more cooperative. Because the collaborative mentality, as you put it, Jack, absolutely is what's needed more than ever. And having values that are honoring, respecting, and appreciating each other is what we've been missing for millennia. It's time we change it. So with that, I'm just going to say, I'm going to wrap this up quickly, even though this is a much bigger topic. This is just a seed I'm planting today. There's something for you to think about. I'd like invite your comments, questions below in the comments after I finish saving this. This is a Facebook Live I do every day, usually 5 p.m. Pacific time, but I'm doing it quickly today because I'm in the middle of an event in this number 500. But consider 501 tomorrow being a new start, a new paradigm, and a new talk about this. At least that's what I think I'm going to do. We'll see. My, talk, my talks aren't usually pre-planned. Um, this is a Facebook Live, as I mentioned. You can watch it on Facebook in my... If you're watching it on the replay, which would be on my business page, which is barryselby.author on Facebook. I'll also have this redistributed onto my YouTube channel, which I invite you to subscribe to and to download or watch it there, which is Barry Selby is my channel. All my social media is Barry Selby. And messages for the maximum of the playlist. And I'll come back to your comment in a moment, Jack. And also, I'm now putting them on my podcast, which is on iTunes, which is Messages for the Masculine. You can also subscribe there and download the audios to listen to whenever you want. So Jack, your point, native culture had much intersex male, female interchanges. Yeah, we've lost that. So tomorrow I'm going to talk about this more, but this is planting a seed for you to think about. So if you're just joining me now, please watch the replay from the beginning. Um, this is a seed I'm planting, a new idea, maybe. A wake-up call, definitely. An invitation to a conversation. So comments, in the co um, questions, comments, thoughts, add below. I'll respond after I sign off later on. And I invite you to keep your ears open tomorrow night, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Once again, I'll be back on with number 501. Maybe it's a new paradigm. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.